I'm going to share my screen. I'm Dr. Rita McGuire. I am the Chief Medical Officer here at Wakana, one of the co-founders. Uh, tonight is a doctor's edition, but I thought that once we go through our information that we do at the beginning of this webinar, that we talk about dosing, that we talk about when you are addressing challenges, sort of making sure you're not taking too much CBD, right? And what does that mean if you've taken too much CBD? So this is the Medical Advisory Board. <clears throat> we all collectively um, really bring a lot of empowerment through educating our customers, <clears throat> excuse me, and our distributors about CBD and the difference between CBD and marijuana and product selections and just overall information that we're getting uh, from research and data now that CBD is legal in all 50 states. So our medical advisory board is made up of physicians in different fields of medicine. I'm an obstetrician gynecologist. We have internists, we have psychiatrists, we have family practitioners. Uh, we have also doctors of chiropractic, chiropractor medicine. We have uh, pharmacists, dentists. Uh, we're looking for veterinarians because we are going to be launching a CBD for pets very soon. We have registered nurses. We have clinical psychologists. We have therapists. We have naturopaths. Um, so we truly, truly have a wide range of healthcare professionals that use, believe, and are advocates for the cannabis plant and CBD. So a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a 30-year veteran in the field of ob -GYN. I completed my medical school in Detroit, Michigan at Wayne State School of Medicine. I completed my residency in OB at Cook County Hospital. I'm also CEO of RJM Wellness and Rip Rita Fitness. I'm a global woman's health and wellness speaker. I'm also a certified physician for the medical marijuana program here in Illinois, as well as I'm a member for Doctors for Cannabis Regulation. So you can see that I'm an advocate for CBD and cannabis plant, as well as my new venture, along with being one of the co-founders and chief medical officer of Wakana, I'm one of the owners of a fat loss camp in South Florida. So now I'm living half the week in Florida, half the week in Chicago, spreading wellness and helping to reduce comorbidities and helping to prevent premature death due to obesity. I'm also receiving my MBA in May of 2022 as well as I am going to be a trichology instructor after November when I graduate as well. So a lot of exciting things that are happening. You know, I'm nearing my retirement age, so I'm gonna be taking on new and fun ventures as an entrepreneur. I'm also a mom of three amazing adult children Jacob, who's 30, Joshua's 25, and Hannah is 23. So out of the three, only one is going into medicine. That's Hannah. The other two are in the business industry. Um, I am still doing, and you can see I've got my scrubs on. I just got home from work not too long ago, but still performing hysterectomy, C-sections, liposuctions, still a practicing physician, as well as a cannabis advocate. So here I am pictured testifying in front of the Judiciary Committee for the legalization and taxation of adult use cannabis here in Illinois. So we were the 11th state to adopt cannabis laws for adults. So when we think about how cannabis has become mainstream. You can't leave my colleague out, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, because in 2014, he had to come back and make a public apology stating that he didn't dig deep enough into the data, into the research. He didn't talk to enough scientists. 
He didn't talk to enough patients that were absolutely using cannabis as an alternative for their health and wellness. So Dr. Sanjay Gupta went around the world, right? Because honestly, there wasn't enough data in the United States because of the legality of cannabis. So he had to travel the world to really get an understanding on how this plant is very beneficial for our body. And we'll learn that tonight and how it can be an option for those who are looking for alternatives to their health. So why do healthcare professionals give this thumbs down? You know, many patients tell me that when they talk to their internists or their cardiologists or their endocrinologists about CBD, they're thumbs down. And it's, it's not because it's bad. It's not because the data is not there, but it's because healthcare professionals have not been exposed to cannabis in medical school. So despite all the rage amongst our patients, uh, because we did not learn about the cannabis plant and its benefits, we are really in the dark. So tonight is for lay people. It's also for healthcare professionals that wanna learn more about one, the difference between CBD from hemp versus CBD from marijuana, and two, how CBD and other cannabinoids that the plant makes work in the body, and three, a little bit more about our products. So this is a great slide, right? Because this slide explains it all. This slide shows that there's two species of the cannabis plant. The cannabis family has a hemp species and it has a marijuana species. Now, all of you've heard of marijuana, I'm sure. And it is a form of the cannabis plant that causes a high, a euphoria, a paranoia, right? When you smoke marijuana, you get the munchies. But on the other hand, the other side of the plant, which is the hemp species, does not get you high. It doesn't give you the euphoria, the paranoia, or the munchies. And the reason why is that the compound and the percentage of the compounds in hemp versus marijuana are very different. See, in marijuana, the THC or the Delta 9 THC level is very high. Whereas in hemp, the Delta 9 level is very low. In fact, by definition, it's defined as 0.3% or less of Delta 9 THC. So though both plants or both species of the plant contain CBD and THC, it's really the makeup that causes a high when you use marijuana, because it's got a lot of Delta 9, and the health when you use hemp, because it's got very little THC and high amounts of CBD that gives you the difference with the health of the hemp versus the high of the marijuana. And this is really, really key that you understand this, that you take this information, because the first thing that people say to you when you wanna share these CBD products is that, oh no, I don't want that, I don't wanna get high. So you can come back and say, well, this is the part of the plant, the hemp side, that doesn't get you high. It doesn't give you the euphoria or paranoia or munchies because it has very low levels of Delta 9 THC and it has more higher levels of the CBD that gives us the health. So let's look more closely at CBD or cannabidiol. See, cannabidiol is the number one occurring compound in hemp. And you can see from the slide here, it has a very long, long list of medicinal benefits. You know, benefits stemming from reducing anxiety to reducing pain and inflammation. Um, it helps to reduce cholesterol levels and blood sugar levels. It helps to slow bacteria growth. It helps with the skin. So psoriasis and eczema and acne. And it also 
is neuroprotective. So it helps to repair and protect nerves that have been damaged. You know, nerves can be damaged for several different reasons, from trauma, from someone who's had a stroke, uh, someone who may have nerve damage and has Parkinson's or multiple sclerosis. So CBD is very, very powerful in helping to be a protector of the nerves. You know, many diabetics have something called neuropathy. They have the tingling and the numbness in their feet. So this is one of the reasons why so many people are looking for alternatives to their health because many people do not like the side effects of many of the medications that they do have to take for diabetes and hypertension and high cholesterol and anxiety and depression. And there's other compounds that the plant makes, CBC, CBG, Delta-8 THC, Delta-9 THC. But you can see how powerful CBD is. It has more medicinal benefits than any other compound that the hemp species produces. So let's talk about how it works in the body because that was the first question I had when I was introduced to CBD four and a half years ago. As a physician, the first question I asked was how does it work? I wanna see the science behind how it works. And the science is very clear. The science is that it works by the endocannabinoid system. This system is a regulatory system. It's, it's the same concept when you think about how does your heart beat, right? That's cardiovascular system. Or how do your muscles and your joints work? That's the musculoskeletal system. Or how does your pancreas or your thyroid work? That's the endocrine system. Well, cannabis has a system in where it works and it's called the human endocannabinoid system. So that when you consume cannabis or its byproducts like CBD, it binds with the receptors in the body, sends a signal to whichever part of your body that needs help or assistance with symptoms and puts the body in balance. For example, if there's inflammation in the joint, maybe it's your knee, maybe it's your shoulder, maybe it's your back, when you consume CBD or even put a topical product on that area, it reduces inflammation. In fact, CBD has been found to be 20 times more powerful or more effective than many over-the-counter medications like Motrin, Aleve, uh, Ibuprofen. You know, I've not taken Tylenol, Motrin, or Aleve since 20. 17 since I was introduced to CBD. So this is how it works. There's a science. The science is called the human endocannabinoid system. In fact, um, if you have a vertebrae, if you have a spinal cord, um, you have an endocannabinoid system. And this is why uh, CBD works in dogs and cats as well. So let's look at our product line here at Wakana. Um, this information um, first has to begin with, and let's see where that slide is. One second, ladies and gentlemen. For some reason, my slides are going out of order, and there it is. Um, starts with the FDA disclaimer, right? That these statements have not been approved or evaluated by the FDA. So if you're nursing, if you're pregnant, if you're under a physician's care, it's really, really important that you talk to your doctor before starting CBD, letting them know you want to use CBD as a tool to address certain conditions. Okay, so I'm going to go backwards here. Um, tonight, we're going to really talk about, as we talk about our products, what symptoms does one have when they're taking too much CBD? In fact, the World Health Organization, that's what WHO, the acronym stands for, the World Health Organization states that when someone takes too much CBD, they may experience extreme drowsiness, they may be lethargic, 
They may have an upset stomach. They may have nausea. They may have diarrhea. But the great thing about a person who takes too much CBD is that they won't die, right? There are many, many medications that you can take too much of and you will die. And CBD is not one of them. When we look at toxic doses, you know, I did my research, I did my due diligence, as I always do when I present information. Um, the toxic dose of CBD is around 20,000 milligrams a day, 20,000. Man, that would mean you were probably drinking hundreds and hundreds of our bottles of CBD, right? And what's interesting is that this level was found to be toxic again, but not lethal, right? It won't kill you, but you probably will be very, very sick. So let's look at the recommended dosing for CBD. You know, the Mayo Clinic did a study and let's just start with chronic pain. When they did the study, they looked at the participants in the study. What they found was that those participants only needed between two and a half and 20 milligrams of CBD with or without THC a day. When they looked at cancer patients that had lost their appetite, they saw that those patients only needed two and a half milligrams with or without THC or with or without CBD for six weeks. When we look at sleep disorders, insomnia, sleep apnea, 40 to 160 milligrams of CBD. When we look at something like glaucoma, 20 to 40 milligrams. When you look at other conditions like epilepsy, seizures, or schizophrenia, this is where you could potentially have high doses, not 20,000 milligrams, but potentially in a schizophrenic, they potentially could need 1,200 milligrams, I doubt it, or in someone who has a seizure in upwards of 200 to 300 milligrams. But the point that I'm trying to make is that most people who are using CBD don't need that much, right? Everyone's different. Everyone's weight is different. Their diet is different. Their metabolism is different. Their body chemistry is different. And all of those things depend on your dose. So our products are tested. This is a picture of myself at Green Scientific Labs. We partnered with one of the top uh, ISO labs in the state of Florida. It's in Davies, Florida. Green Scientific Lab tests both marijuana and CBD products. And I am just so, so pleased and honored that we have partnered with them because they have the state-of-the-art equipment. They have uh, ongoing research and data that's going on about new cannabinoids. In fact, this is the chief scientific officer. He looks like a kid, right? <laughs> Dr. Chris um, is like one of my best friends. I'm telling you, we talk at least two to three times a week, just staying abreast of things as it relates to the testing of our products. So what does the test look like? Well, they're called certificates of analysis, where every single product here at Wakana that you consume, that you put in your mouth, that you swallow, um, gets a full panel. That means we're testing for the potency, we're testing for pesticides, we're testing for residual solvents that could be left behind after the hemp is processed. Uh, we're looking at microbial analysis. We're looking at mycotoxins and heavy metals and terpenes. So that's a full panel that every product that you ingest here at Wakana is going through. Now, our potency on our topical products and shampoos uh, are not full panels because that is not necessary. It's actually overkill, but just know our products all have certificates of analysis. Now, let's look at our products because our products are by industry. So yes, we have products for weight loss. We have products for overall wellness and immune. Uh, we have products for skin care, for hair care. We have essential oils. 
So what I love about that is that we have products for everyone. Everyone that may have different concerns in their life, we have a product for them. So let's start off with our tinctures. Our tinctures are products that you do ingest. You place these tinctures under your tongue and it's important to hold it under the tongue for 60 seconds or more before you swallow so that the CBD can effectively get into the bloodstream. We have two different lines of products. We have our power line. Those are products in the black label. We have our pure lines or our broad spectrum lines. Those are the products in the white label for those who may have urine drug screens at their job. So our power line, full spectrum means they contain the legal limit of THC, which is 0.3% or less. And then our pure line, our broad spectrum line contains less than 0.0% of THC. We also have another product that you can put in your water, your tea, your coffee, your oatmeal. It's a water soluble power product. And it's a great product for those who don't like holding oil underneath their tongue, or maybe for someone who has a cognitive uh, dysfunction, they may have dementia and they can't remember to hold the oil underneath their tongue. So those are our products as well as we have one other tincture I want to bring to your attention, and that's our Hempranium MD. That's one of our most potent products. It's 900 milligrams versus the 500 milligrams or 300 milligrams of CBD. So for those who have more of a serious condition that they want to address, the Hemp Power or Hemp Hempranium MD is a product for them. Our Hemp Powered Hair is a product that you can use as a tincture underneath your tongue or topically. Great product for those who have hair thinning or hair loss or autoimmune conditions that cause hair thinning or hair loss. So let's look at what the dosage looks like. Now, this is important because I'm gonna make a point at the end of taking too much CBD, so stay with me. So in our power products, each little drop is 1.67 milligrams, right? One little drop, not a whole dropper full, but one drop. Now in our Hempranium MD, our more potent product, it's 900 milligrams. So one little drop is 2.5 milligrams. The reason why this is important because you wanna ensure that you're kinda keeping a track of how much CBD you're taking on a daily dose, okay? So that's the way you figure it out. You know now that each drop of our power products are 1.67 milligrams and the hemp, or the hemp MD is 2.5 milligrams per drop. Our pure tincture is one milligram per drop. That's real easy to remember. If you have urine drug screens, you want to make sure you're using our pure products. Now the topical products are hard to dose. Um, there is a concentration, like in our Extreme Power Relief, the entire jar is 400 milligrams. If you've got that 30 or one ounce jar, it's 200 milligrams in the entire jar if you have the 15 ml jar. So depending on the severity of the joint or muscle, if you use more liberally topical, it will be more effective. And if you use less, it will be effective if that condition that you're addressing is mild. So the topical products don't have that precision in dosing like the tinctures, but just know we have our topical liquid relief as well, another great topical product for inflammation and pain. We also have a body cream that is great for uh, dryness, uh, helping to uh, reduce wrinkles, uh, helping with skin conditions that you wanna treat those symptoms like psoriasis, eczema, and acne. We have other topicals that are uh, really for massage, for helping to uh, get you in the mood. We've got some seducting, seductive sort of scents, our lotus. We also have a facial serum. 
because we know there are receptors in our skin that actually need CBD to reduce bacterial infections, to reduce inflammation. And then our oud body oil, though it does not contain CBD, it's a great addition to our topical products. Our edibles, our edibles are something that you do. You're able to figure out dosing, right? The dosing is right on the bottle. You'll either have 10 milligram gummies or 25 milligram gummies or 50 milligram gummies or 60 milligram gummies. So those are really easy to figure out. If you eat half a gummy, take half of that number in half. If you eat a quarter of a gummy, you would figure out the math that way. But just know that even our flat belly brew, one scoop in hot water is five milligrams of CBD. We offer other products for our immune system, our immune defense tea, our bitters is a great detoxification. And though these two teas do not contain CBD, they really do help provide the body the appropriate detoxification that we all need during this global pandemic. So again, gummies will vary in dosing depending on which gummy you are using. Smokable products are kind of like topical products. You can dose one pull. If you use one pull, it's about 0.25 milligrams. What we recommend is one to three pulls three times a day. That will give you around an average dose of five to six milligrams a day of CBD. We offer Delta 8 cartridges. We offer a CBD joint. We offer premium flour if you want to roll your own CBD joint. Just know that smokables work quickly. They work fast. Within one to five minutes, they can get into the system. So that's why I really do love smokable products. And then our sexual health. Again, these you can't dose outside of our king of the jungle gummy. That one you can dose, but the other topicals like the CBD lube or the seduction butters, again, have an overall total quantity of CBD, but also know that topicals do not pass the blood brain barrier. So topicals can be safely used if you have urine drug screens. The only way a topical will cause a urine drug screen to be positive is if you eat the topical. So that's why caution, the CBD lube Cherry Bliss is an edible topical, so be mindful of that. Our culinary products, again, our spices, our butter, those are products that you wanna use to spice up different recipes, as well as our Culinary Plus. The Culinary Plus is easy to dose, 1.67 milligrams per drop. So let's look at the hair care products. Again, hair care products are topical. They're not gonna pass in the blood brain barrier. So the CBD is left topically to help those hair follicles. Our whole Save Our Strand system is a great, great line for those who have hair thinning, hair loss, or maybe you just want to maintain your healthy hair. So there's a lot of great choices. You can't go wrong. Um, what we're going to move into as we close is what happens if you take too much CBD, right? So this is a real life person that sent me an email. We're gonna keep that person's name anonymous. Um, but this email came to me over the weekend and it said, I am a new owner. She's uh, a new Wakanapreneur and I've been trying the products and have a few questions. I noticed that I've been extremely tired. I'm doing the flat belly challenge. So I faithfully take a gummy in the morning and at lunch, along with a cup of flat belly coffee. I usually forget to take a gummy before dinner. I'm also using three drops of hemp on the scalp for hair loss. I will also take three drops of power hempranium, 500 milligrams a day. I end the day with three 
King Tachaga for my diabetes and cholesterol. I often need something for sleep. I've used half a power gummy, but not sure whether this should be a pure gummy. I've tried half of a Delta 8 and that was too much. Am I overusing the products? Please advise. So I want you to put in the chat right now if you think that this person is overusing the products and could this be the reason why this person is extremely tired, right? Because we talked about at the beginning of the webinar, some of the side effects that you have when you take too much CBD in, right? You have lethargy, you extreme tiredness, nausea, diarrhea, right? The great thing is that you won't die, but you might feel absolutely horrible. So yes, if you put in the chat that this person is taking too much CBD, you are absolutely right. So let's do a little fun activity. Let's figure out how much CBD that this person has taken every single day, right? So each flat belly gummy is 25 milligrams. And I estimated that though she said that I sometimes forget to take the flat belly gummy with dinner, we know that she's taken at least two to three every single day. So I multiplied three by 25 and got 75. So I'm putting 75 every single day she's getting from the flat belly gummy. She also stated that she's drinking a cup of coffee in the morning. So one scoop of that coffee is five milligrams. I would note that the coffee is broad spectrum. So if you're out there and you have random drug screens, you do wanna use our coffee. She is using three drops of hemp powered hair. Now she's using three drops topically. So even though I added it in the equation, it's really not fair to add in the equation because she's not ingesting the CBD because it's being applied topically. Three drops of the power hempranium. Now she didn't say if she's doing three drops twice a day. So I said three drops times 1.67 is five milligrams. She's taken three tablets of the King Tachaga. Each of those tablets are 25 milligrams each. So I put her at 75 milligrams for that. She's doing about a half a gummy, a power gummy. That's 12.5 milligrams because one power gummy that she's taken is 25 milligrams. Uh, she sometimes uses a half of the Delta 8. So I figured she maybe was using the 25 milligram, the Flight 25. So that's 12.5 milligrams, which gives her a grand total of CBD of 189 milligrams of CBD. Now, she's a brand new distributor right out the gate. That's way too much CBD, too soon, too fast, 189 milligrams on a daily dose. Now, remember the chart I showed you from the Mayo Clinic. Most people don't need more than 20 milligrams. Some categories, 40 milligrams. Some categories, um, two and a half milligrams. Some categories, 300 milligrams. But absolutely, this explains why she is extremely tired. So I did some research for you guys, and I did my due diligence and did my digging around, right? And CBD for diabetes. I always teach, start low, go slow. But what I found out with diabetes is that really most diabetics don't need any more than two and a half to 20 milligrams of CBD per day, right? She says she has diabetes and she has high cholesterol. Now, remember with the FDA disclaimer, we can't make any claims that the CBD will cure her diabetes. But what we are doing is that we're addressing the symptoms of her diabetes, right? So symptoms of type one diabetics, mood swings or irritability, both type one and type two diabetics have fatigue, they have muscle loss, weight loss, 
They have slow wound recovery, meaning that when they get cuts or if they undergo surgery, their wounds don't heal very quickly. Blurred vision and hunger. Now, we certainly don't want to make a diabetic more fatigued than they already are, right? So this is why I always preach, start low, start slow, because you want that person to have the best experience, not the worst experience. Now, type two diabetics typically have numbness or tingling, right? Because they have something called neuropathy. And we talked about how CBD can reduce the nerve damage. It's neuroprotective. So absolutely CBD will address all of these symptoms that a diabetic may have. Well, let's look at cholesterol. I did the same digging for you guys, right? Looking at data, looking at research, and what I found was the same. The recommendation for CBD in assisting with symptoms that high cholesterol may have is about two and a half to 20 milligrams, still not a high dose. And remember this person is already at 189 milligrams of CBD a day. That's way too much. And that's why they're extremely, extremely fatigued. So what are some of the symptoms of high cholesterol? loose stools, poor appetite. Can you imagine you're already having loose stools and you're trying to help someone and they're taking all the CBD and now one of the side effects is loose stool? Well, they're gonna be pretty mad at you, right? Start low, start slow, you'll have the best, best outcome. So what are my recommendations for this person, right? Certainly not taking all those products. I never advocate taking all of those products. Like that's a lot, a lot of products. So what you have to do, you gotta prioritize what you wanna address. Because sometimes if you have a long list of conditions and challenges in your life, you can't hit them all at once. So let's first look at diabetes and cholesterol because that's probably the most concerning out of all of her challenges that she listed in the email to me. So my recommendations is yes, the Power King to Chaga absolutely is a great choice for someone who has challenges due to diabetes, hypertension, um, other conditions where you wanna build your immune system in, up, because the mushroom, the chaga mushroom, has so many benefits to the body itself. And then you add CBD along with it, it becomes a very, what we call a super, oxy, super oxidase. Um, it's called a superfood. This mushroom is a superfood. So you don't need the Power King to chaga and the other products. You do one or the other. And what I love about the Power King to Chaga is that it's a capsule. And you'll run into a lot of your, your um, clients, your prospects that don't like putting a tincture under their tongue. They don't like the taste. This way they can swallow a capsule. One capsule is all they need twice a day to address those conditions that she is trying to address, which is diabetes and hypertension. So yes, it's a great, great choice, but I wouldn't use it in addition to all of those other products. So Power King to Chaga is a capsule for all of those people out there that don't like using tincture. They don't like the taste. So the other recommendation, if they didn't want to use the Power King to Chaga and they're trying to address their diabetes and hypertension, would be on the right. The Power Hempranium 500 milligrams, three drops twice a day. The Black Seed, which I always recommend highly to every single diabetic and hypertensive and high cholesterol that I know. And then for sleep, the Power Gummies. So right out of the gate, if you have someone that has long-term chronic conditions, you wanna address that first, right? Yes, hair loss is an issue. Yes, people need to lose weight, 
but let's normalize and bring into balance their blood sugar and their cholesterol. Weight loss. Let's say that this person wanted to really concentrate on weight loss first. So I don't recommend the Tachaga and the weight loss products and the Hempranium and the Power Gummies like she was taking, right? So pick one or the other. So let's just say she decided, I wanna work on my weight. And the reason why I wanna work on my weight because I know that the ingredients in the flat belly gummy is going to address my blood sugar and my blood cholesterol. See, the flat belly gummy has ingredients like berberine, chromium, and cherilucum. These are herbs that help to reduce the oxidation, the inflammation in blood vessels. So theoretically, you could do this instead of doing the Power King to Chaga or doing the Hempranium 500, the Black Seed and the Power Gummy at night. You theoretically could just do the Flat Belly Challenge products, which are the Flat Belly Gummies. You take one 15, 20 minutes before each meal, a scoop of that coffee in the morning. You may repeat it in the evening. And of course, starting with the detox four days before you start the challenge. So these are just recommendations of what you could theoretically do, but absolutely, I don't recommend that you take all of those products like she was taking with 189, almost 190 milligrams of CBD on a daily dose. Now with the hair loss, she can use these topicals. These topicals are not going to factor in her becoming extremely tired because these topicals are just that. They're just topically, they're not gonna pass in the blood brain barrier. So yes, recommend the SOS um, shampoo, conditioner, detangler. Recommend the hemp powered hair topically. All of this can address her hair loss, without ingesting additional CBD that can cause side effects. So hopefully this has been helpful. We've talked about CBD, how it works in the body. We've talked about our products, but more importantly, we talked about how to stay away from potentially taking too much CBD. Always prioritize what you want to address first. If it's weight loss, if it's reduction in blood sugar, blood cholesterol, you know, if it's hair loss, that's real easy because those pro products can be taken um, topically. But I brought this to our doctor's edition tonight because I wanted to shed some light on how you can recommend these amazing products to people, but if they take too much, guess what? they're not gonna think you're very amazing. They may be a little upset with you because they're feeling awful. They're feeling lethargic. They're feeling extremely fatigued. And these products are to bring life and wellness and balance and homeostasis and, and energy to our body. So I'm gonna stop sharing here. Let's look at our time. Our time is 7.43. I could take a couple of questions. Oh, we're gonna get ready at eight o'clock. I wanted to share this slide one more time. At eight o'clock, please join us for our business overview. If you're on the line tonight and you still wanna hear more information about our movement, we're, we're bigger than a CBD company, but about our movement, about the opportunity we have, about our product line, you wanna tune in at 8 p.m. That's the Zoom ID, the passcode is CBD, 101. You can screenshot that. You can also call the person who invited you on this call so that they can give you that information. If you missed it, you also want to um, call the person that invited you so that you can get these products. These products are amazing. Start low, start slow. Don't overdo it. Make sure that you are using all of that information I gave you about how many milligrams per drop each
product is in our tincture. So let's see if we have questions here. Um, my customer's A1C numbers are really good from the gummies. Wonderful. Yes, so because CBD reduces inflammation, because CBD is an anti-diabetic, has anti-diabetic properties in reducing inflammation and improving the insulin that's produced in the cells that produce insulin in the pancreas, really, if you are using a gummy, that's going to address maybe the gummy you're taking for sleep or the gummy you're taking for inflammation or pain, the gummy you may be using to help with anxiety, guess what? That same gummy is working on the inflammation in the pancreas. So just don't forget that you don't have to take a lot of products all at one time to address multiple issues that you have going on in your life. So that's really important. I have a client that suffers from boils. What do you recommend? So boils are a result of a bacterial infection. You can have boils. Uh, a lot of, of my patients have boils underneath their arm, underneath their breasts. Um, some people we see boils after they get their hair cut, they have something called a folliculitis. So when you see boils, think internal. Think something internal is going on. So you want to use an internal product. You want to use a tincture. You want to use a gummy. So the Hempranium 500 milligrams is a great way to start. We don't make claims that any of our products would cure boils, but absolutely CBD has been found to reduce inflammation. CBD also has been found to reduce bacterial infection. So boils, internal, I would use a tincture for that. Great question. Any other questions? Let's see, I'm gonna go up to see if I missed any. No, I didn't miss any. Let me know if you felt that this was helpful. Am I taking too much CBD? Start low, start slow. You don't need that much. Studies have shown you don't need that much. So please don't give your customers or even yourselves that much of CBD. I am diabetic. Should I take the black seed with the king tachaga? No. With the king tachaga, the mushroom already is such a powerful anti-diabetic, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. I'm telling you, this mushroom is a, a superfood. So no, you don't need to take the additional black seed with the power king tachaga. Any recommendations in regards to... Uh, recovering from COVID-19. Well, COVID-19, again, is a result of an inflammatory response. Um, it's an exaggerated inflammatory response on steroids. So you want to make sure that you get our immune defense tea. Our, we have a defense pack with uh, essential oils, our nasal uh, First Defense is an amazing product with essential oils and CBD. So recovering from COVID-19 is our defense package. That's the package that you want to get. And I'm glad you're doing better. And I'm glad you're recovering. Nerve pain, neuropathy. Again, neuropathy is something internal. You want to use both the topical for the nerve pain and the tincture for nerve pain. Neuropathy can be from diabetes. Neuropathy or nerve pain can be from trauma. There could be a lot of reasons, but just know that topical needs to be paired with a tincture for nerve pain. Great, great question. I'm going to take one more question. What can someone take for inflammation from COVID-19? Same, um, same answer as I gave before. The defense package is a great package. It has all the essential oils, the Hempranium 500, along with the first nasal defense spray. Perfect. So please continue to send me your emails. From your emails, this is a great way that we can have an exchange on Tuesday as well as Wednesday night so that I can really help you to get the information that is needed 
so that your clients, your customers, and even yourselves understand that more is not better. More is never better when it comes to CBD. So good night, everyone. We'll see you at eight o'clock. Be well. Um, I will see you next week. Be well, be safe. Thank you and good night.